Welcome back to Mining Your Future. I'm Danielle Marchant. And I'm Maggie Dorf. I didn't know you wore glasses. They're not glasses, they're safety goggles. Well, you look very safe. Thank you. I'm going to meet Clint at the Wolverine Mine, Walter Energy, so I thought I would be prepared. Well, you look prepared. And where to after Clint? After Clint, we're going to meet a group of people who are all association representatives or organization representatives who support the mining industry, so I'll get to know what it's like to be one of them. Great, and then after that? And then after that, uh, community relations. Ah, the job that is self-explanatory, but we need to know more about. Yeah, that one. Wonderful. Okay, well, be safe. Be sure to look both ways before you cross. Of course. Excellent. Okay. The exit's this way. <laughs> So we're in Tumblr Ridge, which is Northeast BC, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I am so surprised that this is what we found heading up here. We're here to meet Clint, who is the health and safety superintendent working at the Wolverine Mine for Walter Energy. I can't wait to meet him because it is a total integral part of this industry. Hey Clint, really nice to meet you. Hi Maggie, nice to meet you. I hear that you're the uh, safety superintendent here at uh, Walter Energy, and I can't wait to, to see what it is that you do. First and foremost, we're going to need you to get outfitted with your PPE. My what? You know, the PPE. One of my colleagues provided you with a, a set of PPE. If you go back to your pickup, get your PPE, and then we'll get started and sign in at the gate. Okay, there's no need to use that kind of language. <laughs> Excellent. You've got all your PPE on, Maggie. You got your hard hat. You got your glasses, you got your high-vis vest, and you got your steel toe boots. Nice. We're ready to go and sign in at the gate. Let's go. Fantastic. My name is Clint DeRoger. I'm the health and safety loss control superintendent here at Walter Energy Wolverine Mine. Safety is a big part of the mining business. It's, it's the number one focus on top of production, on top of everything. The reason for that being is we want people to come be able to be productive, and then be able to go home the same way they came in at the beginning of the shift. Well, I'm responsible for the overall health and safety and loss control of the Wolverine mine, which encompasses security, emergency response, communication from our senior level management teams right down to our, our frontline floor workers. In your regular day, how many pit stops would you say you make uh, out in the field? The safety coordinators, they'll be out on the field probably estimated about 75 to 80% of their day. Okay and uh, basically do a safety audit and some coaching and mentoring, uh, what we call is a safety interaction. Safety interaction. Yeah, and that's, that's all about risk mitigation, coaching and mentoring. Back when I was younger, I was heavily into uh, rock and ice climbing and it really into ropes. It just turned out that I was in the right place at the right time, about 20 years old. Fall protection came into place where they needed rope rescue. So I was approached and uh, was asked that if I would like to be a rope rescue technician. And from there, it's just grown. So we're actually going to do a safety interaction up here today. And typically what we'll do is we drive around and then we'll pick one individual that's operating in the pit and we'll stop them and have a discussion about the hazards that are, are present in the pit today and the controls that they've used. Okay, PPE. Your hard hat, sir. You bet. So first of all, we communicate with the operator and we want to board his truck. He gives us a signal. I just offered to put his wheel chocks down. Now we can board on the truck. Okay. Aw, he offered to put his wheel chocks down. So yeah. Always make sure we use three-point contact. Got it. Always, okay? Three-point contact. Three-point contact. So typically what we do is once we get on the vehicle and it's secure, yeah. uh, we have uh, a discussion about the hazards that are identified. So we have what's called a field level hazard assessment. Okay. So there's going to be some hazards that are going to be identified by Don in that process. Sure. So he'll jot them down. So then what we do at the end is kind of just do a review of his card. Right. And you know what we discuss should be you know somewhat documented in the card process, sure. right? And it is. You know he has pre-trip, spill yep. rock. The controls, you know, call, communication. Nice. So you've done a great job here, Don. And, and the, we really appreciate, you know, you looking out for your hazards and identifying them. The stereotypical safety guy is, is recognized as a safety cop. Like, do you have your glasses on? Do you have your vest on? Well, we don't try to approach it like that. There's a new way of, of doing business and safety 
as a safety professional is viewed as more of a, a communication and a coaching and a mentoring where you stop giving a citation or a ticket and you explain the reasons why we need to do things and how to identify hazards and implement controls. One of the really um, interesting things that I remember you saying to me, we shook hands and you looked like, you know, deep into everyone's eyes. And I thought to myself, you know, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> but then I found out later that what you're doing really is you're checking that they are totally coherent and with it. Correct. That they're not too hungover from anything, you know, the night before. And That's you're correct. certainly not you know, doing anything creepy, you're assessing the situation and the individual, whether they're fit to come on site. Correct. So that was definitely a wow moment for me. Like, yes. no, he's, he's not crazy. He's just doing his job really, really, really well. Mine rescue is a real key component in, in a mining environment. You actually can't do mining without mine rescue. The two go hand in hand. There's competitions that are held every year where all the mines in British Columbia get together and they send their top mine rescue guys to compete against one another. It's a fantastic place to really learn and hone your skills with mine rescue. Industry has supported me all the way through my career development. So I've been able to achieve uh, university level occupational health and safety certificates. So if you, look, if you look back up on my wall, just for an example, I mean, that's, you know, $50,000 worth of certificates and training over the course of my career oh, wow. that didn't come out of my pocket was directly supported by industry. Wow. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. If you show motivation, you have some skill sets, you can really aspire while working. Wow. So you got paid to do a job and then you got your education paid for at the same time. At the same time. You're a smart man. Because of my profession, I get to work in, a, in an industry that financially contributes to my family in a, in a way that we can enjoy recreation. So we spend uh, a lot of our time um, snowmobiling and uh, fishing in the summertime and uh, you know water skiing, those types of activities. My family really loves the outdoors and recreation, so we take full advantage of uh, Northeast British Columbia. Clint stands at the helm of one of the most important facets of the mining industry, safety. The men and women participating in the mine rescue teams Clint mentioned earlier dedicate their own personal time to additional training just so they are ready to respond in potential emergencies at work or in their communities as volunteers. Team Miracle is yet another group made up of executives, managers, analysts and consultants who form a non-competitive exhibition team. Participating since 2009 in the North-South Central Zone Mine Rescue Competition, Mine Rescue, Mine Safety and the importance of a job such as Clint's are some of the most vital parts in this industry today. Special Olympics BC provides opportunity for individuals with intellectual disabilities to enrich their lives and celebrate personal achievement through sports training and competition. For the past seven years, Gold Corp has been an integral part in growing Special Olympics youth program initiatives called Active Start and Fundamentals and expanding to an additional 34 communities. Gold Corp's partnership with Special Olympics BC embodies the company's vision of creating sustainable value, building a legacy of social and economical progress in communities where it operates. really cool. Explain. Well, Clint is responsible for a lot more than I ever thought he would be as a safety coordinator. And they have an annual safety competition that's called the Mine Rescue. That sounds like so much fun. I'm totally signing up. Yeah, I mean, that does sound like a good idea because mm -hmm. I believe you need to work, you know, in one of those mining companies. Oh. Mm -hmm. Minor detail. Where to now? Well, um, next we're going to meet a few people who are heads of associations and organizations supporting the mining industry, so very important. Really? Yeah, okay, so then I'll change. Yeah, please. Did you catch it? Next, we're going to take a look at a very different area, the world of organizations and associations that support the mining industry. 
We're going to meet individuals who run these organizations and associations and ask them, what is it that you do? What sort of mandates do you have? What sort of challenges do you face? And maybe even what sort of events do you put on that you or I could attend on an annual basis? So I'm looking forward to this. I definitely want to learn what's out there. Let's go. My name is Dave Bozowski, and I chair the BC Mining Human Resource Task Force. It's an organization that's devoted and focused on attracting and retaining people into the mining industry in British Columbia. You know, we have 22 different organizations that are in the task force. It's very, very important that we be able to build partnerships between all those groups. The primary role for the association is to be advocates for the industry, specifically the mineral exploration and development industry based here in BC. We work with the public, with communities, uh, schools and institutions to raise awareness about mining and also to celebrate what we're all about. We go out into the communities of British Columbia and educate the people and the politicians on the benefits of mining. So the mandate of the organization is to bring together educators, First Nations and industry to build and follow through on plans for training and employment in and around exploration and mining. There are misconceptions about what the mining industry is. We often see visions on television or in the media about uh, disasters in South America or in China. Those are incidents that don't reflect the Canadian experience. Nobody wants an aggregate pit in their backyard, but everybody needs aggregate. So we decided as an industry that we needed to uh, open up our gates and invite the public in and show them what we actually do. The subject of mining is a little bit hard to understand and get into, and as an individual you might go, oh, I don't care about it. So the museum is really a way to help people, just kind of peel back the layers and say, what does it mean to me? The biggest challenge we have in the, in the mining industry is to, to promote the mines to these communities, to kind of introduce to them what benefits and economic their development they're going to get from the mine. To share information about discoveries, about the technical side of how these discoveries are made and the geoscience that's involved and so forth and that really is the lifeblood for mining. We hold several events in the communities in Vancouver to promote what we do and also to ensure that people are, are aware of what mining is all about. For every job that's produced in a mine, two jobs are produced outside the mine. And those companies or those jobs are engineering firms, architectural firms, consultants, suppliers of heavy equipment, tire suppliers. So it's a wealth of opportunity that comes about from the mining industry. What we do really provides an opportunity that may have never come before. So, you know, there's some wisdom really in all of our partners bringing this model to life. Another key role for the association is to influence public policy related to safety, environmental stewardship, reclamation of sites and so forth. It's very important. The industry has evolved over the last 40 to 50 years significantly. My name is Gavin Jerome, the President and CEO for the Association for Mineral Exploration in BC. My name is Lori Sterrett. I'm the Executive Director of the BC Aboriginal Mine Training Association. My name is Bob Esau. I'm President of the BC Stone, Sand and Gravel Association. My name is Karina Brignon. and I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Mining Association of British Columbia. My name is Mike Ranallo and I am the Chairman of the Mining Suppliers Association of British Columbia, better known as the MSABC. Everything that we we rely on in our daily lives is built around the products that come from mining, the minerals, the metals, whether it's the chairs we sit in or the bicycles we operate or the cars we're in, it all comes from products from mining. And I should point out, all of the mining activity that takes place in BC that creates over $8 billion a year in revenues and all of those good social impacts that, that come to British Columbians take up less than one half of 1% of the total land area of British Columbia. There's no industry that takes up such a small part of our landscape that produces so much wealth. Who knew that we have access to so many wonderful organizations, associations, and events, such as the Mining Week and the Roundup, all put on by people who support this amazing industry. Wow. Wow what? Just simply wow. I mean, I felt like I got a bit of a miniature education. I had no idea there were so many associations supporting the mining industry in British Columbia. Really? Mm-hmm. That's cool. And for the last person you're going to see, whom is that? We are going to meet the community relations person at Goldcorp. Hmm. 
That's not the uh, first thing that comes to mind when I think mining, but clearly a very important part. Very. She travels a ton, constantly on the go to different locations, so I think I'm gonna jet. Yeah, you should. Okay. Travels. I wonder if she travels business class. So today we're here to meet Dina at Gold Corp. She deals with corporate social responsibility, which is a lot of community involvement type stuff. Now the office that we're sitting and waiting for her in is absolutely stunning. It's huge and she should be out any minute. Hi Dina, it's Hi. very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I understand that you're responsible for... Corporate social responsibility. Ah, now hopefully by the end of the day I'll know a little bit more about what that entails. You'll be an expert. <laughs> Sounds good, I'll follow you. Come on up. My name is Dina Aloy and I'm Vice President Corporate Social Responsibility at Gold Corp. Gold Corp takes corporate social responsibility seriously and we've been working to embed it into everything we do so that throughout our business cycle, whether it's a project, an early construction, or throughout operation and even closure, we want to be corporately responsible in how we deal with the environment and with people. So we have a, a policy, a corporate social responsibility policy. We also have a human rights policy. And we have a corporate social responsibility framework. That means that all of our sites, no matter whether they're southern Argentina or northern Quebec, we have a certain way of doing work. I've always worked in the, in the non-governmental organization area in international development and community development. And to be honest, I feel here at Gold Corp, I'm doing the same work that I've always done, just on a different scale. So I worked with uh, community development NGOs, and then I even worked within the UN system through UNICEF. And so I worked overseas most of my career, and I, I ran into mining companies along the way. Uh, mining companies that were looking for support. They, they were in a community, and they didn't quite understand the community, and they would come to the non-governmental organization and say, can you help us understand what are, what are the needs of this community and what can we do to help them? So I knew when I came back to Canada that it was the mining industry I wanted to work in. The industry, as far as geology and mining engineering, they know what they're doing. Environment as well, and the environmental technology is phenomenal. The side that they're not as familiar with are working with the communities and understanding what the concerns of the communities are. The team that I work with is keen to not only meet international standards and corporate social responsibility, but to exceed them. So we are going to be talking with Julio and Bronwyn, mm -hmm. Guatemala and Toronto. So we just saved ourselves a lot of carry-on luggage by sitting down here and... We did. We don't get as many points. We <laughs> could point on the points. Absolutely. So Bronwyn, I just wanted an update on where we're at. I know we're starting in Mexico and then going to the Canada-US region. Can you tell me where we're at with the training? Certainly. So we're working with countries on the training. The training will be rolled out to all of our sites in Mexico. It will then go to Canada and US, and will eventually be rolled out locally, so in Central and South America as well. Excellent. So Fund for Peace has completed the training module, and then it'll be rolled out. It'll go site by site to all the employees. For our corporate social responsibility framework, we went to international experts on how to, for example, build communication systems. We're always looking for how to do it a little bit better um, than what is required of the industry. When we're with communities, talking to them about what their needs are and what their vision of their future is, we want to invest in that vision because our mind has a finite life. We're looking at investing in community development that once the mind closes, that socioeconomic prosperity will continue in the community. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure looking at all the various things that you guys do here. Actually, a bit of a tearjerker moment. Had some issues there. I noticed that. You might want to take this with you. Oh, Dina, thank you. You think of everything and everyone at all times. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, so we'll, we'll see you guys around. Oh, we'll see you Sunday. Sunday. At, at the airport. We're going to Chile. We're going to Chile? I do travel quite a bit. I think the longest I've been in Vancouver in one stretch has been three weeks. My favorite part is being in the communities and working with our, our CSR teams at the sites and, and being in the communities. 
I really enjoy actually seeing all the results and watching how our teams interact with the communities and that closeness of collaboration and how they've built these partnerships on sustainable community development. Community relations, though a fairly self-explanatory position, is far more complex and challenging than I ever anticipated. It was fascinating to watch the countless programs Dina coordinates with her team to ensure her company's high level of corporate social responsibility is maintained. Hi, I'm Rob Stevens. Welcome back to Fact Digging. Many people don't realize how many finance-oriented careers are directly connected with the mining industry. For example, stockbrokers, accountants and lawyers are key to raising money on the stock market for mineral exploration. Canadians are leaders in mine financing. Over the past five years, more than 80% of global stock market financings for mineral exploration and mining have taken place on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Hey. Hey. So? Community relations, how was it? It was fantastic. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised at how above and beyond Gold Corp goes when it comes to community involvement around their operations. It's wonderful. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. And next week, what do we have? Next week, we have a camp manager, an IR person, which is investor relations, and last but not least, an exploration driller. Hmm. So either exploration or drilling? One of the two. We'll figure it out. Well, that's fun. Can't wait. Hope you join us next time on Mining Your Future.